Earth Science is brought to you by Physics Classroom. To continue learning about the significant place where we live, let us explore the Earth and its geological processes. As a springboard, let us contemplate on the following key question. If the geological processes occurring on Earth provide hazard to human safety, where do you think is the safest place to live? The geological processes occurring on Earth can be classified as endogenic processes and exogenic processes. First let us discuss the endogenic processes. Endogenic processes is associated with the energy originating in the interior of the solid Earth. This energy is what we call thermal energy. We are living on the ground that is moving all the time. The forces within the Earth that is causing the ground to move are known as endogenic forces. The geosphere of the Earth is subdivided into three main layers, the core, the mantle, and the crust. The crust is divided into two types, the continental and the oceanic type. The combination of these two is what we call the tectonic plates. Mantle, on the other hand, is divided as well into two layers, the upper layer and the lower layer. The lithosphere of the Earth consists of the crust and the uppermost solid mantle. While asthenosphere, also known as the plastic layer of the Earth, it is where the molten materials located. The lithosphere rests on the asthenosphere, that is why the ground that we are living on keeps on moving. The inner and the outer cores are both made up of iron and nickel alloy. The inner core is solid state because of experiencing a very high pressure from three layers, outer core, mantle, and crust. Pressure in the outer core is not high enough to make it solid, the reason why it is molten or in liquid state. Where does the Earth's internal heat come from? The driving force is the thermal energy of the mantle, which mostly originated from the decay of radioactive elements in the core of the Earth. These radioactive elements are unstable elements. When these elements undergone decay, it releases energy as the product of the reaction. Here are some of the endogenic processes of Earth that play significant roles in the evolution of platforms on Earth. First is magmatism. Magmatism is the formation of magma. Magma is the original material that make up igneous rock. It is responsible for the development of intrusive and extrusive igneous rocks. Magmatism happens when magma is generated and develops into igneous, magmatic rock. The process can take place either under the surface or on the surface of the Earth. Second is volcanism. Volcanism is a process that usually happens after the magma is formed. Magma tries to escape from the source through opening in volcano or existing cracks on the ground. And third is metamorphism. Metamorphism is the process of changing the materials that make up a rock. Chemical components and geologic characteristics of the rock changed due to heat and pressure, increasing or decreasing. This diagram of rock cycle can be utilized to conclude that endogenic and exogenic processes is significant in the metamorphosis of rocks. Due to endogenic processes, igneous and metamorphic rocks are formed. On the other hand, the formation of sedimentary rocks is because of the exogenic processes. The geologic processes that occur on Earth causes stress on rocks. Geological stress is the force, if there a push or a pull, that acts on the rocks. There are four different types of stress, and the first one is known as the compressional stress. In compressional stress, rocks are pushing or squeezing against one another, the stress produced is directed towards the center. Compressional stress is usually what takes place in folding, which result in mountain building. When these rocks meet, the orientation can either be horizontal or vertical. Horizontally, the crust may thicken or shorten, vertically, the crust may thin out or break out. Compression pushes rocks together. 
As seen in the picture, the stress on both sides is directed towards the center. The product is the formation of mountain. The second is called the tensional stress. Rocks are pulled apart, which may separate in opposite directions or moved farther away from one another. This stress is what separated all the continents in the world. Tension stretches the bed of rocks. As seen in the picture, there is tension at the center due to the pulling apart of the rocks. The third one is known as the shearing stress. Some of the portions of the plates at the edges may break away in different directions, eventually making the plates smaller in size. The friction brought by this stress can cause earthquakes. Depending on the condition of the environment, shear stress usually happens at different rates at the boundaries of the plates. Shearing can cause masses of rock to slip. As we can see in the picture, the movements of rocks is in opposite direction. The fourth stress on rocks is called confining. The crust becomes compact, and it looks smaller. Unlike in shearing, none of the crust's edges break away. Though not apparent, this can cause sinkhole, where the inside portion of the ground has already been disintegrated. Because of uniform confining pressure, breaking away of rocks happens, and it could come from the inside. This may retain the shape of the crust, but not its mass. Nothing may seem to have changed in the appearance of the crust, because deformation have occurred inside. The previously discussed are the different types of geological stress. We have the compressional stress, the tensional stress, the shearing stress, and the confining stress. And now let us proceed to discuss the exogenic processes. Exogenic processes occur on or near the surface of the Earth. These are usually influenced or driven by gravity, water, wind, and organisms. These processes could be destructive occurrences that leave significant changes in the landscape and even in the ecosystem of an area. In extreme cases, exogenic processes can wipe out majority of the organisms inhabiting in a particular area. One example is the process of mass wasting. There are four types of exogenic processes. The first type is known as weathering. Weathering is the disintegration of rocks, soil, and some minerals, together with other materials, through contact with the Earth's subsystems. This happens even without movement or transportation. There are three types of weathering, the physical or mechanical, biological, and chemical weathering. Let us first discuss the physical weathering. Physical weathering is the breaking of rocks by mechanical forces concentrated along rock fractures. This can occur due to gradual or sudden change in temperature and pressure. In physical weathering, soil cracks because of extreme heat or drought. In some cases, water and wind may abrade or scrape rock or soil. Cracks in the rocks was caused by frost wedging. When it precipitates the cracks in the rocks, it will be filled with water. This water then freezes, and as it does, the frozen water expands. The expansion causes pressure to the rocks in both sides, and forces it apart. This cycle will continue, until the rock eventually splits, all the way down. And now let us talk about the biological weathering. This refers to the weakening of the subsequent disintegration of rocks by plants, animals, and microbes. Living organisms contribute to the weathering process in many ways. Roots of a tree, because of searching for moisture, causes cracks on the rocks. As the tree grows, the roots gradually warn the rocks apart. Even the tiniest bacteria, such as algae and lichens, can produce chemicals that facilitates the breakdown of the rocks where they are inhabiting. Chemical weathering is the breaking down of rocks by chemical reactions. New minerals are developed, and sometimes the original properties of the minerals in rock or soil are replaced. There are three types of chemical weathering, and one of them is known as oxidation. Oxidation is the reaction of the substance with oxygen. When iron in the rocks reacts with oxygen in air, it forms iron oxide, which weakens the rocks and turns it into a rusty appearance. Rust may contribute to the disintegration or breakage of the rock. 
The other type of chemical weathering is hydrolysis. Hydro means water, and lysis refers to the process of breaking down. Hydrolysis is the chemical breakdown of rocks, when combined with water, to produce clay and soluble salts. When water comes in contact with granite, the feldspar crystals inside the granite, reacts chemically forming clay minerals. And another is the acid rain, which may cause metals or rocks to corrode or deteriorate, and changes their properties, because of reaction to acids by some minerals. When acidic rainwater falls on limestone, chemical reaction happens. New soluble substances are formed in the reaction. What we have just discussed, are the different types of weathering. The physical, also known as mechanical weathering, the biological weathering, and the chemical weathering. The second type of exogenic processes is erosion. Erosion is a process, wherein rock debris or soil are moved from one place to another, which takes place when there is rainfall, surface runoff, flooding, freezing, hurricane and many others. This is an example of erosion, because of different agents of weathering like water and wind, the bonds between rocks and soil disintegrate, causing it to collapse. And these rocks then turn into fragments or sediments, and soon will be deposited in the ocean bed. The third type of exogenic processes is mass wasting. Mass wasting is the movement of large masses of materials at the slope of a hill or mountain, due to the pull of gravity. This process is very destructive, in areas with increased water flow. Shown in the pictures are examples of mass wasting. This phenomenon may cause damage to a large-scale area, just like what happened in a particular area here in the Philippines, during the onslaught of typhoon or strong storm. The fourth type of exogenic processes is sedimentation. Sedimentation is the buildup of materials such as soil, rock fragments, and soil particles settling on the ground. Over time, the sediment load becomes thick, and forms a new layer of ground. In oceans, the sediment layer can form the ocean basin. Due to constant geologic processes, ocean basins change in size and depths. The change depends on the rate of erosion, and their surrounding continental masses. The first exogenic process is weathering, rocks are broken down due to exposure to rain, wind, and water. Another type of exogenic process is erosion, rock pieces fall down, to the bottom of the cliff. And these rock pieces are spread in the area, by transportation, and deposition. Likewise in mass wasting, large masses of rocks from hillside or mountainside, are broken and fall down as fragments or sediments. Eventually, these pieces of rocks get stuck together and becomes a rock by a process of sedimentation which is called cementation. On a large scale, when large masses of rock sediments become thick, it can form a new layer of ground. In conclusion to all of these, the end product of the exogenic processes is the sedimentary rock. Now let's contemplate for the question, posted a while ago, where do you think is the safest place to live? Perhaps some, may be confused, nowhere is safe, and the most we could do for our own safety, is to always be ready. And as we reflect, on the destructive phenomena, that may occur, anywhere else on earth, we may realize, that destruction is inevitable. However, destruction is not at all a bad thing, it is actually a way to create something. Apparently, we are already destroyed. Destroyed by so many challenges in life, but the destruction within us, must serve as a way to create, better versions of ourselves. Here's to say, thank you to everyone, and that would be all, for today's lesson. Hoping that you have gained a valuable learning, as a product of a meaningful realization about the earth, where we lived.